Hello again. Perhaps you remember this final image from video 5, where we used bubbles to show how little had been invested by the NIH in America in 2011 on research into ME-CFS compared with some other illnesses. Several people asked me what the situation was like in the UK. The data has been much harder to find, but now I have it. First of all, though, we need to put it all into context. The American economy is approximately seven times bigger than that of Britain. If this represents the American government's investment in medical research, you can see that Britain manages only a little over half its proportional share. Divided more or less equally between the Medical Research Council and the National Institute for Health Research, the NIHR, which is part of the NHS. Are you surprised? In America, charities and charitable foundations raise approximately 10 cents for every dollar that the state invests into medical research. In Britain, charities and charitable foundations raise approximately three and a half times as much in proportion. Around half of this money comes from major charitable foundations, such as the Gates Foundation or the Wellcome Trust. The other half from individual donations via the usual charities. Let me stress that these figures are approximate. The situation varies from year to year. So here is a fresh Bubbles video, on the same scale as before, to represent the UK state investment into medical research on ME in 2011. First of all, here are the bubbles representing UK official spending on research into diabetes, HIV AIDS and depression in 2011. There was no state spending on lupus or multiple sclerosis. Now for the spending on MECFS. Can't see it? Well, it isn't your monitor. There wasn't any. Nothing at all. In June 2014, in the online section of the British Medical Journal, one letter stated that CFS has no known organic cause and used this to suggest that it is a culturally driven disorder. This opinion is still quite common in the medical profession. Obviously, you wouldn't get a comment like that from an educated and intelligent individual accepted for publication in an eminent journal unless there had been thorough research carried out, would you? Otherwise, it would just be blatant prejudice. And they wouldn't accept that, would they? So let us track back through the years, focus on biomedical studies and find that thorough research. 2010, none. 2009, none. 2008, none. 2007, none. 2006, none. 2005, none. 2004, hey, what's this? No, I'm kidding, folks. That was the amount of money wasted, sorry, invested in the PACE trial and its sister's study, the FINE trial. But you know all about that. And it certainly wasn't biomedical. 2003, none. 2002, none. 2001. None. 2000. None. This is getting boring, isn't it? Don't get the idea that there weren't any applications for funding for biomedical studies. There were, but every single one was turned down. I could carry on, but you get the idea. In 2003, the Medical Research Council set up a research advisory group and in 2006 held a joint workshop with Action for ME. In 2008, they set up the CFS ME Expert Group to focus on funding research into ME. But it wasn't until 2012 that they actually managed to find £1.6 million to fund five small studies, which are now producing some valuable findings. In 2013, this group was replaced with a CFS ME Research Collaborative. No further studies have been funded. Are you impressed? Do you have faith in them? 
I gather that they are proposing to fund two or three more studies in specific areas in 2015-16. So that's it. That bubble is the total official spending on biomedical research into MECFS in the UK by the MRC and NIHR over the last 25 or more years. You know, nearly six times as much was invested by them on research into HIV AIDS in 2011 alone. Of course, medical professionals who continue to believe that MECFS is primarily psychological are ignoring the large number of small, charity-funded studies that have found biomedical abnormalities in people with MECFS. The problem is that we need large-scale studies for them to make an impact. Tonight, go out and look up at the stars and remember that we don't actually know the original cause of the universe. So what you're seeing, according to some medical logic, must be simply a culturally driven hallucination. Where does that leave us? Politicians may claim that we are all in it together. They may aim to leave the world in a better place, or they may claim that they represent fairness. But what sort of country leaves those who are amongst the most ill to fund vital research all by themselves? <laughs> A few weeks ago, part of a seaside pier in Eastbourne was burnt to a ruin. The government promptly stepped in with £2 million funding to help this large town in the relatively affluent southeast of England cope with the disaster. That's more than the amount that has been spent by them on biomedical research into MECFS over the last 30 years. So there you have it. A quarter of a million people whose lives have been destroyed by MECFS equate to the ruin of part of a Victorian pier. We need to make a noise, a loud noise. It doesn't have to be aggressive, it doesn't have to be destructive. The facts are on our side. We have to be loud, persistent and everywhere. So do your bit. Use this video if you like, or the facts on my webpage. There is a link below. But contact your local MP, your local media, everyone you can and tell them that we need properly funded biomedical research into MECFS now. Leaving this in the hands of the Medical Research Council is so utterly wrong. Remember all those years of rejecting biomedical studies? The MRC have had 30 years to support biomedical research and have refused to do so. Politicians, get in touch with Invest in ME, one of the few charities not allied to the Medical Research Council. Get in touch with biomedical researchers and discuss the way forward. Above all, invest. <laughs>